Oh, this is for Woj over at ESPN.com. Participants on a Board of Governors call on Tuesday with NBA Commissioner Adam Silver left the virtual meeting feeling increasingly positive about the league's momentum toward a resumption of play this season. That according to ESPN. Here's Brian Windhorse, who was on ESPN uh, explaining more of that meeting. Of dollars lighter than they were supposed to be. And if that isn't a motivating factor right now, I don't know what is. Um, there's a number of different committees working. There's secret committees, there's superstar committees, there are union committees. <laughs> Everybody's got a committee, but I'm going to tell you that you're all going to come out with the exact same bottom line, which is this is going to be a study in risk tolerance. Yeah. We're not going to have a cure and we're not going to have a vaccine in time for this season. So this is going to come down to the NBA building layers of protection, how much risk are you willing to accept? It's going to land ultimately, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but ultimately it's going to land on Adam Silver's desk, and he's going to have to make the call, and it's going to be one of the biggest decisions he's made in his career, and all of the sports commissioners across all the sports are going to have to figure out where their risk tolerance is. Yeah, and and really, it's kind of funny, Jordan. You could extrapolate that into society, right? Like, as we reopen every business, every Everybody, that, that's what we're all it's about, mitigating that risk. What kind of risk are you willing to accept? Where is that middle ground? That's what everybody's trying to find. But I just like that these conversations are starting to move forward. We're no longer in that holding pattern, right? You got the Korean baseball going on, uh, the Bundesliga, which is the premier footy over there in uh, Germany. I believe that's about to reopen. Uh, the NBA is feeling increasingly positive, as you just heard. The MLB of course, the MLB's biggest hangup right now looks like it's actually money between the players and what they're willing to accept versus the owners. Uh, but but a lot of these sports seem to be moving in the right direction. And man, oh man, when I read that headline of the NBA yesterday, I just started thinking, Am I after the wasteland of this last couple months, if I could watch Zion Williamson take a basketball court again, I, I, I legit like would almost be moved to tears. I was thinking about that yesterday. I mean, you're talking about NBA playoff time. I mean, this is oh. some of the best time to watch the premier athletes in the world, given everything they got. This is some of the best time in sports. And tell me Last Dance doesn't have you extra fired up for some NBA action. And you know what? I bet all these young cats... They've been watching Last Dance. Yeah. They're 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 learning about Jordan. They're now feeling motivated, inspired. They realize what it takes. Everybody wants to make this happen. So I'm feeling I'm feeling optimistic on this Toomey Wednesday. Speaking of playing, Greg Sankey hopped on Paul Feinbaum and was clearing up some rumors about the SEC, the Southeastern Conference, talking about just playing against all their institutions, just the SEC playing within the conference this season. I was asked a question, and I think if the, the entirety is played, I, I spoke when this flared up of the connection between the Autonomy Five conferences being likely stronger than I've ever experienced. We're, we're speaking every day, but even more importantly, our schedules are connected. So the notion that one lightly thinks about going off and doing something in an independent way is actually not attached to reality. Well, so is he saying that they're just taking it seriously? Like, it's like I mean, is he saying like it's just not that easy? But we will do it. It seems like he's kind of wanting to sit on the fence a bit there, right? Be like, hey, we're still committed to these other conferences, but if we wanted to, I'd have to really think about it. But if we wanted to, we could play on our own. It's a very Greg Sankey quote. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, The LSU Tiger Athletic Foundation and the LSU Athletics announced that the popular touring event, the LSU Coaches Caravan, Mm. is shifting to a virtual format that will air today, Wednesday, May 13th at 6.30 Central Time, and will be live streamed on the uh, Facebook page, on TAS Facebook page. Wait, is that 6.30 Central as well? Uh, is yes. Because that's also when the yeah, documentary It goes head to head with the, open for, uh, the uh, one for the ages. Oh, well. Uh, not Not too well planned. Um, by somebody over at you know uh, what though look man uh, you some you have to do these things to figure out maybe what you could do differently the next time this year's TAF coaches caravan will feature 2019 national coach of the year Ed Ogeron others guests uh, other guests include director of athletics Scott Woodward senior associate AD for health and wellness Shelly Mullenix offensive coordinator Steve Ensminger Bo Pelini running backs coach Kevin Falk event goers will hear from the coaches and special guests 
in an hour-long virtual event moderated by our own Jacob Hester. The Facebook live stream is free and open to all Tiger fans. To find TAF on Facebook, visit facebook.com backslash LSUTAF. And as T-Bob said tonight, one for the ages, the hour behind-the-scenes cinematic look into LSU's remarkable national championship football season will air at 6.30 this afternoon on the SEC Network. Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday, it'll be a 60-minute recap of LSU's season. It'll feature game-by-game highlights, post-game interviews, and will bring fans onto the sidelines and into the locker room for rarely seen video of the Tigers. That's a sales pitch from the SEC Network. That's a good, it's a good sales pitch. I, I mean, look, it's not going to be full access with cursing and everything, I'm guessing, like Last Dance, but it's going to be more than what you generally see. I think it's going to find a nice safe interesting middle ground but like i said man whatever in this current landscape i'll take anything i can get and plus everything i watch from this 2019 lsu football team just brings me warm happy feelings and i still have to pinch myself that it even all happened the way that it did all right jock over at wafb has been doing great work by tracking some people down and getting interviews that he's posting on social media this is from jack marucci who's over at lsu uh he's talking about the uh the start to the season and uh, and some of the recruits that uh, that could be affected. You look at our program now. You go, why, why wouldn't you come here? Tell me, tell me something. What what would you would not want to come? Tell him, Jack. Yeah, you, know, you got good defense. You got defense coaches. You have the facility. You have the offense. You have the offensive philosophy. You have one of the best, if probably the best head coach in the game that has the vision. So it's crazy to think that someone wouldn't want to come here. And I think we're you know we can be selective now on who we put. They have to fit what coach wants, what yeah. the program wants, you know. So they better recruit, I guess, us a little bit, too, you know, from that standpoint. Yeah, there's something that we discussed in the Hold That Podcast podcast yesterday that me and Brody Miller do every week about LSU football. And I think we touched on on this show as well. Is just that, like, I think what we're going to see, and, and, and don't look at the rankings right now because it's so early in the process, whatever. They don't really matter, even though LSU is highly ranked for the amount of commitments that they have. But I think you're going to see a pretty unreal recruiting class this season by the time it's all said and done. And and we're going to learn, like, what happens when you give a recruiter, like, the acumen that Coach O has, when you give him all those resources Jack was just referencing, the best facilities in the nation, a 15-0 season to point to, a natty ring to flash on his finger, uh, an offense that set records. And it's a, that all of that is only going to continue to pay dividends. Yeah, without question. And I think – as as Jack was alluding to there, uh, the program is recruiting itself. I mean, it's at a clip yeah. right now where they are, you know, every every player that is on their board, they communicate with. Yeah, they have access to. Now they 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 they, not, they may not be a a final three or a a top three school and a finalist for that said recruit, but everybody that LSU is interested in is communicating back and forth with. So and that, and that, that wasn't always the case. Right. Right. And then so I that's, mean, you that's important. The quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, the quarterbacks wouldn't take their call for a decade. You know I mean? Now they've got some of the top quarterbacks in the country still interested in this recruiting class after they already have one committed well, I mean, that, to the that, group. That's why Miles Brennan was actually such a big deal, right? A couple of years ago is because this was a kind of premier quarterback that had chosen uh, to go to LSU despite the lack of success. And, and, and you know, when... When everything went down with Matt Canada, I talked a lot, me specifically, talked a lot about broken campaign promises, right? How he said he wouldn't get involved with the offense. How he said all these things, right? And in the short term, that looked to be the case. But in the longer term, he has held up those campaign promises. But even two guys like Miles Brennan, where he said, look, we're going to figure this out. We're going to rework this offense. We're going to put the quarterback in a premier position to succeed. And although the path was a little more circuitous than you would have thought, they've, they've managed to do that.